Welcome to Deep Tech 315. We got a fun episode today. We're going to be breaking down everything from OpenAI's Developer Day, Microsoft, and Last Wrap, and talk about what this means for Apple. And going to the top of the list and also the beginning of the week there on Monday, OpenAI has their, they call it Spring Dev Day, and it was a 26-minute keynote. Doug, you know me, I'm a man of brevity. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Uh, spoiler alert, Google's was almost two hours long, but 26 minutes. And I want you to go first on your reaction to what we saw. For OpenAI, I mean, the biggest takeaway, I think uh, they do live demos. And live demos are always more impressive, even when they have little hiccups. And there were some little hiccups, if you paid attention closely, to uh, the unveil of GPT-4.0. But the bottom line is, I mean, I thought it was kind of a direct shot across Google's bow and not very veiled, by the way. I mean, uh, OpenAI has made a habit of this where they kind of hold an event right two, three, four, five days ahead of Google's known event that's mm -hmm. announced to announce, uh, you know, what they're doing and steal some of their thunder. It's, it's startup playbook 101. They can move faster and be more nimble than Google as a smaller company. But I thought the first thing I thought was, look, what they just did live with GPT 4.0 was all of the stuff that Google promised in a edited video a couple months ago when they unveiled Gemini. Like literally right. it, it just worked. The translated language in real time, it read images in real time, help you with your homework. Um, it was really promising. It's not GPT-5. I think when we talk about GPT-5, we might start to see the model understand things like mathematics more, which would be a huge evolution, but it was a meaningful step forward. And I think it shows that OpenAI still has the baton for the lead in uh, best AI model in the world right now. That was my takeaway as well, that I felt OpenAI's got, I'll call it a six month lead on Google. And I also honed in on that concept that these are live demos. And uh, when we talk more about Google, those were recorded demos, but uh, that stuck out to me that they just believe more or ready to show their products more. Uh, the the other piece to it, of course, uh, throughout this, the the general headline from my perspective is this was the first real live demo of the multimodal models. We've been talking about those for six months. Those, of course, is just going beyond a text input to using sound and uh, basically a listening ability, uh, seeing vision ability, even the ability to read your emotions, uh, bringing all that together. And it was, uh, I would say, I was different adjectives that I've used after watching it was, it was amazing, spectacular, and mind-blowing. And I think it 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 does. Uh, those are 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 are, wide, are uh, selective adjectives, but I think just describe really how powerful what we're seeing. And the other piece I took away, you know, this kind of introduction of the multimodal model and, and reality is one big takeaway that I had. The other was like my optimism that AI is ultimately going to. Uh, the substance will exceed the hype. My optimism that increased because I'm seeing little things that they're doing. You it gave some examples of that, and I highly recommend people watch this 26-minute uh, demo. But I'm seeing glimpses of what can be built, and we're still talking about artificial narrow intelligence here. Imagine what happens with general intelligence. So I think it was a really big deal because I think it it just shows that uh, the pace that we're moving and it, it increases my view that they're going to be a, a key player here. And as I kind of put it all together, I think like the last round was done at like $95 billion. Like, is this going to be a trillion dollar company someday? It's one of the few in the world that has a chance to get there. There's not many companies that you could say that about. Even a bunch of companies that are probably at three, four, five hundred billion. I don't know if you could honestly say, I think it's going to get to a trillion, but if everything goes right, I mean, this is sort of venture capital 101. The question you have to ask yourself is, if everything goes right, not what goes wrong, that's what public market investors need to ask. But if everything goes right for open AI, I don't see how they don't become a trillion dollar yeah. company. And the everything goes right is it's one of the four foundation models that basically all applications are built on because uh, every application is going to have some element of AI. That's the, and they get paid on the tokens on, on that. Is that the everything going right in a nutshell? I, 
Well, I would say everything going right is they are undoubtedly the leading model of the big four. I mean, the big four, I think, are, and we agree with this, fairly well-defined. It's OpenAI. I think they're still clearly in the lead. Gemini is probably somewhere behind them. And then on the open source side, obviously, you have Llama 3 with Meta. You could argue or debate where to put things like Anthropics Claude or Mistral on the open source side. I think Grok with, uh, with XAI is kind of a dark horse because of the unique data that that will eventually have. Mm -hmm. But to me, those are the big four. It's OpenAI, it's Google, it's Meta, and then ultimately it's XAI. Uh, you know, they might be the one that could really mess things up. That's um, my rank too. And, but that's the, ba the basic idea of everything going right is they're a leading they model where their every, lead. everything is yeah, built they... on top of this five, 10 years from now. Exactly. Yeah. Make, makes a ton of sense. And again, if you think what you see with that 26 minute, minute video is impressive, just wait till we get to general intelligence, super exciting stuff. So let's shift gears, move to Tuesday. Google has their IO event. And my mind is like, I just saw something incredible on Monday and everything you tell me now, Google is going to be measured against what open AI uh, just said. And, uh, exactly what open AI wanted. Exactly. Yeah. They mission accomplished. And uh, what were, uh, what were some of your observations and you're probably running that same um, calculus in your head. What jumped out to you from Google? Uh, I mean, I thought Google still did a good job. Obviously, we own we own the stock. I'll try to set aside that bias. It's one of our key holdings in our flagship Titan fund. But I thought they did a good job of showing that their model continues to advance. I think they are the clear number two. You think about uh, the capabilities of these various large language models. And specifically, there's two things I think that stood out to me. One was they're absolutely getting more aggressive integrating the AI results into search results, which I think is a natural evolution. And it'll be a huge distribution tailwind for them in terms of getting people to use AI. And then two, I think they are showing that they're going to be much more aggressive on the device side, trying to integrate this into Android, glasses, mm -hmm. or, or some sort of camera-based uh, product they sort of teased as well. So those were the big two things. Um, I do think there's there's one thing just about that idea of integrating AI into search that is worth thinking about. I had this conversation with somebody the other day, which is most average people in the world, like we're nerds, we like to use AI and play with it and test it. Most people don't care. They don't know what ChatGPT is. They don't know what Gemini is. They don't know what a search generative experience is. But when they start seeing that search response change, and giving you direct answers, giving you longer answers, these generative answers, a lot of people I think are just gonna say, hey, that's pretty cool. Like Google's better now. And I don't think that's gonna make them want to go over to ChatGPT and it's probably not gonna make them curious about AI either. They're just going to say, well, okay, Google just became a better product for me. I'm gonna keep using it like I've used it before. And my experience is just that much better. I think that's an important thing to think about when we think about how does this play out over the long term? It's going to be hard to change people's behaviors. Google still has you captive. And if they make your experience better with AI, they're just going to lock you in that much more. Yeah, that uh, you hit it right on that the search piece is definitely the elephant in the room uh, related to IO. From my perspective, I was kind of got caught on my eyes, got distracted with the, are these live demos? Are they recorded demos? And uh, but really the, the substance, I think, was they're doing a lot in AI, like you said, with the device, this Astra ability to use where basically cheap glasses and with a camera on it to be able to uh, take in the world around you. It was remarkable. Uh, that was a, a piece that really OpenAI didn't have. They had something kind of like it, but I think that that kind of stood alone. But back to the search pieces, uh, Sundar hit it early in their in the in the event talking about uh, search within the first few minutes, and then they kept coming back to it. And like you said, is that they're going to be launching these AI overviews. And so I've been playing around with it. I've actually, now I'm, I'm seeing it in my Google results. But just to uh, give a quick example is that when you ask it more of a, a question that needs an explanation versus a commerce question, uh, your results start out and you see the, the generative box right there, right up on top. Um, as I experimented with different uh, prompts, uh, and what that I would call it 
uh, information related uh, prompts that I thought they would all come up as a generative uh, result. I noticed that sometimes they had, uh, they were uh, defaulting to putting the sponsored results ahead uh, at times ahead of some of these generative results. So it kind of the piece, the window that's generating kind of moves throughout the page, which tells you they're keeping close eyes on the connection between uh, putting a prompt in, a search in, and, and keeping that monetization going. But I definitely thought it was a point of strength, the fact that they're rolling this out to everyone in the U.S. in the next week. And then I think they wanted to go globally by the end of the year. Like They're embracing this, this shift, so they must be seeing something good. So this whole idea that Google is going to get displaced, you gave the kind of the the logical explanation of why, but just from my perspective, it really stood out the pace that they're embracing this over AI overview and search results. I, I would say I was most encouraged. And I think too, when you talk about where they're putting that generative response on the page in your testing, eventually you're going to see ads in that generative response. I mean, there's like, in my so opinion, ads like, like sponsored generative results. Exactly. Are you going to and trust I the results if they're sponsored? I think you will. You you trust Google's results right now when they're sponsored. I think they'll be disclosed just like ads right. today. You'll see that this is a sponsored, you know, or it has whatever. It could be perhaps the top. Let's say you say, uh, you know, I have this problem with my car. It makes this knocking sound. Let me play the sound for you. And the general response might be, oh, that sounds like your spark plugs are bad or something. Right. Uh, would you like plug. to call the best mechanic in the yeah. area that happens to be right on Google's local search page? Um, right. And I'm sure that mechanic would be happy to pay for that call. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's a good experience, though. And can it be delineated as sponsored? Absolutely. Does it give a great customer experience? Absolutely. Does it make the advertiser happy? Absolutely. That's the way we're going to go with it, I think. So we just had the two big models, the kind of leading models talk, and our, my attention quickly shifted to June 10th. And what do you think all this means for Apple? I think it's important who they choose ultimately for their partner in AI. I mean, now there's reports out saying that it might be open AI, not Google. A couple months ago, it, was, it seemed, seemed like it could be Google um, on the AI side to help power some of Apple's experiences. and. Given how much Google showed kind of what they were doing with cameras, what they were doing with Android, really trying to integrate the model, particularly uh, the, the nano model, right to work on device in an Android device, it begs the question of if Apple does end up going with OpenAI, which is the most recent report, does Google feel like it needs to take a more aggressive role in building hardware? Um, mm -hmm. And it may, because I think that ultimately hardware is how we will interact with these AI uh, interfaces. And if they're kind of locked out of the main device in the U.S., they might feel like, you know, hey, we need to come out in the market and we need to make really good devices that maybe still aren't quite as good as Apple's, but give them more of a run for their money than they do right now. Yeah, I didn't think of that device kind of angle to this and what that means for Android and Google. They've historically been a little bit shy at going there. My sense was that it's very clear that Apple needs to partner with somebody. Everything we saw from OpenAI and Google Day, it's so far ahead and so hard and expensive to build. And Apple needs to do this. It's been rumored. Something's going to come. It will be announced on June 10th. My money that is, is on that it's Google. The reason why is they've got this big search relationship right now, $15 billion and a year. And I'm sure that that's going to kind of play into this. And uh, that relationship is that dynamics probably going to get renegotiated as part of this. I think in the end, Apple's actually going to get paid more from Google in total because this is a form of distribution essentially for Google to work. And so I think that this is a, uh, Apple's actually going to take money in, in this relationship. And I want to give you a final word in the, the, the 30 seconds we've got left here. Uh, do you think Apple is going to be the one paying for this relationship or get paid? It's a really important question, and I think you could make an argument for either way. I understand the distribution component of it. The other side, though, is you know, this is something that Apple, obviously, to your point, they, they can't do at the same level that OpenAI does or that Google does. So I think it's 50-50. I mean, I think you could see an arrangement where you know, maybe it's almost kind of a neutral thing where Google or OpenAI says, we love the distribution, but... You know, we can't pay you because we're running really expensive infrastructure and we're not monetizing this right now. 
and Apple says, look, we understand we're giving you great distribution. You've got costs on your side, but we have to create an incredible experience for our users and we can't do it without you. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if the monetary exchange is, is maybe actually more muted in the beginning. And that probably evolves over time as one side or the other figures out how to monetize it more. Makes a ton of sense. On behalf of this week, Deep Tech 315, bye for now.